options pool. Uh, this concept uh, has to do, of course, with options and granting options and employees and how to retain them. Uh, essentially, an options pool is a chunk of options inside of the company structure that the board members or senior executives have the right to hand out to employees, to consultants, to contractors, to really to anyone they would like in order to do one of two things, either to provide an incentive for them to perform or to uh, retain employees over time. And those two things are a little bit intertwined, but essentially it just gives you a bunch of options, a pool of options to use. Um, in this case, we're gonna talk about a company example. If you think about all the shares outstanding in a company kind of as a pillar here, um, there's going to be a bunch of people owning shares and then you're going to have an options pool, which is a chunk. Typically, options pool range from between 10% to 20% uh, of the equity, amount of equity in the company. Um, certainly, they can be smaller. This is for, you know, for businesses that are typically going to raise funding uh, that might become venture funded someday. Certainly, smaller businesses or businesses that don't even have options exist. Uh, but in this case, we're going to talk about an example where between 10 and 20% of the outstanding uh, equity is in the form of an options pool. So let's look at uh, before investment and after investment. Uh, the reason I use these two examples is because generally that's when an options pool is created, uh, is during an investment round or at a corporation. Uh, it's fairly common to create them at a corporation as well. But in, in the case of an investment round, uh, let's talk about an investor coming into a company and wanting an options pool so they can go out and hire some new employees. So before founder number one owns 50% of the company and founder number two owns 50% of the company. After they raise a little money, um, it really what would happen if they didn't have an options pool is that founder number one would have 33, founder number two would have 33, and investor number one would have 33. Uh, but in this case, they all collectively decide that they'd like for there to be some options. So these folks are going to have to lose some of their percentage in order to create an options pool. Let's say we're going to create an options pool of 9% because it makes the math easy in this case. So if they want to create an options pool of 9% and each of them agrees to equally lose uh, equity, which isn't always the case, uh, sometimes the investor will demand that only the founders lose equity. In this case, it would be 30% ownership for each user and thus you've created, nine, oh, I'm sorry, for the investors and the founder, and thus you've created a 9% options pool. So now you can hand out these options any way you'd like going forward. Uh, that's the concept of an options pool. Uh, the key here is that existing shareholders have to take a little bit uh, out of their, their hide, a little bit out of their skin, in order to create this options pool. There are lots of options of who does that, no pun intended. Uh, the investor can do it, uh, the founders can do it, and that's something typically negotiated during the funding round. If you do this at a corporation, it's easy. If the two founders are just incorporating the company, they can simply agree with one another. We're going to create a 20% options pool. Founder number one is going to have 40%. Founder number two is going to have 40%. And the options pool will be 20%. Okay? So incorporation is pretty simple. It's just in the documents. Um, during a funding round, there'll be, there'll be some negotiation between the founders and the investors. Uh, but the idea is you create a pool of options that you can then hand out to employees, contractors, anyone you'd like as an incentive in the future.